Um, let's talk about Bill Watts because Steve wrote about Bill Watts being fired. Here's what he had to say. As soon as Bill went, I thought I would be the next one straight out the door as in any other business. So in wrestling, the new man in charge would bring in his own guys and get rid of the fellows associated with the old regime. I thought that would happen to me. And if I'm honest, I wasn't too upset at the prospect. Yes, I was earning $1,500 a week, but I had to pay for the hotel I was living in and for the rental cars too. I had to pay 40% to my tax bill at the end of the year and had to send money home to pay my bills in England. And now listen, I know $1,500 a week, boy, there's a lot of folks I know who would consider that a great living today. But again, you're not able to just have one set of bills. He's got a, a UK set of bills and now he's got his US bills. It's not a ton of cash, but I think it's probably natural for him to feel uh, pensive maybe is the right word about, oh gosh, Watts is out. What does this mean for me? That uncertainty in wrestling is there for a lot of performers then now, and maybe forever, huh? Actors, actresses, musicians, anybody in the performing arts from ballet down to wrestling. <clears throat> it's the nature of the beast. It's one of the things that makes it so difficult is that uncertainty. And it's why I have so much respect for people who are not able to be successful for a period of time, but to make it an entire career out of it and come out the other end as a sane human being. I don't care who you are. You got my respect because it's incredibly tough, incredibly tough. And also keep in mind, again, I'm, I'm trying to look at this from Steve's point of view back in 1993, he came into a shit storm. WCW was at its lowest point probably until the very end, 2000 or whenever it was. <clears throat> from a morale perspective, from a performance perspective, WCW was in a fucking toilet. They were just abysmal with no, no hope even on the horizon. And from the office to the, to, to the locker rooms and everything in between, it was everybody. Hell, at this point in time when Steven came in, I was looking for a way out of WCW. Before I got the nod as executive producer, once Bill Watts got fired, um, up until that point that Bill Watts got fired and I found out they were bringing in an executive producer, I was packing my shit. I was on my way to LA. I was selling shows already at that time. So my first show to Fox network in 1993. And I'm looking at Lori going, this place is fucking crazy. WCW. My contract was coming to an end. The, everybody was so miserable, including me, who had just a year and a half before was just kissing the ground every time I walked into CNN Center. I was so grateful for that job. Within 18 months or so, I was ready to pack my shit. So that's when Steve came in. So the fact that he was, you know, first of all, I can't imagine how he made it on 75 grand a year. Now you got to pay double taxes and you're living in a hotel, even a cheap hotel. It gets real expensive when you live in it. You're buying your food out. I mean, it's almost, I don't know how he did it, to be honest. But on top of that, he, he stepped into WCW at one of the worst possible times. Not only that, when he first debuts on WCW television, he doesn't have this character. I mean, he's quote unquote, just a wrestler. There's not a lot of emphasis on character. He's going to be thrown into the uh, title tournament for the vacant television title. He'll get a win over the barbarian in the first round and then lose to Johnny B bad in the quarterfinals. But as we fast forward to June 12th on an episode of WCW Saturday night, which again, just to add this context, that's the a show. This is pre nitro. So this is the a show he's going to turn heel and he's going to claim descent from William, the conqueror and sir William began serving as his manager. Of course, in real life, sir William is Memphis legend, Bill Dundee. What do you recall about this heel turn and him becoming Lord Steven Regal? And then what can you tell us about Bill Dundee being his manager here? That's really my first memory was as far as Steve as a character was in that Lord Steven Regal character. I'm, I, I don't remember watching him or paying attention to him when he was just Steve from the UK. All right. Um, I like the character because Steve did it so well. He mastered the little 
tiny nuances, almost to the point of being a caricature of what that character was, which I guess made sense because it was a very animated cartoonish type character. It wasn't a real guy. This is back in the, we're going to do what WWE does. They're doing big characters. We're going to do big characters. So I really liked it. I used to love to watch Steve prepare for a promo. Now, this is back when I was an announcer, right? I'm not like looking at things with a critical eye and how to make it better or any of that shit. I'm just a fan that happened to be an announcer. That's all I am. But I love to watch. You know, I, I love to watch people that were really trying to get better at what they were doing. And I would watch Steve and about, 10, 15, 20 minutes before he'd step up and start doing whatever he was going to do, if he was cutting promos or whatever, he would actually start his body, his posture would change. Like he would be, you would see him become Lord Stephen Regal over a course of about 10 or 15 minutes before he actually got in front of the bike. The way he shook his little head, you know, kept his chin up properly. Kind of looked down his nose, even though he was making eye contact. I mean, it's all these little fucking things. But he was getting into that character before he stepped up to the microphone. I was so impressed with that. And you've heard me talk about little details. I said, oh, television isn't someone else told me this. This wasn't me. Um, someone I have a ton of respect for. Said, great television is nothing more but a great attention to little details. And and I didn't, I hadn't heard that back then but i used to just watch steve and go wow this is pretty cool he goes from just being polite very soft-spoken very respectful very very respectful guy unassuming as hell you wouldn't really notice him in a room if there were 10 people in a room he might be the last person you'd recognize or or notice because he just he was very very reserved and very respectful and within about 10 minutes and he'd just start changing he'd morph become that character. It was really cool to watch. He didn't need Bill Dundee. I don't know why, <clears throat> nothing against Bill Dundee. But typically when you have a manager, it's because there's a flaw. There's a hole in the game. Your talent can't really conduct an interview effectively. So you bring somebody in, like a Bill Dundee, who is good on, who was good, is good on, on the mic. But Steve Regal was so fucking good in promos that even then I was wondering, well, why? What's is that not distracting from the person you want to focus on? If you want to get the character over, why would you have another character in the limelight that is completely unnecessary? Because Steve could do all of the talking he needed to do. He was really, really good from the get-go. Um, 